Question number four, Scott Simpson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance and asks, what reports has he received indicating continuing economic growth in 2016, low inflation for New Zealand households and increased business activity? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf order, of the Minister order. of... I have a, I, I certainly hope it's a genuine point of order. The Right Honourable Winston... Of course it's a genuine point of order. The fact is that he hasn't read the question properly. I didn't detect that it was inaccurate, but to move matters forward, I'll ask the member to ask the question again. Thank you, Mr Scott Speaker. Simpson. My question is to the Minister of Finance and asks, what reports has he received indicating continuing economic growth in 2016, low inflation for New Zealand households and increased business activity? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Hey, don't look at last week's sheet. Stop looking at last week's sheet. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, I have received the Treasury's monthly economic indicators report. Treasury reports recent indicators including solid growth in retail spending and strong tourism flows to areas such as the members' own electorate indicate the economy experienced reasonable growth in the March 2016 quarter. A net 18 per of businesses expect increasing trading activity above the long-run average. Cost of living increases for New Zealand consumers remained low at 0.4 per cent in the year to March, well below average weekly wage increases of 3.1 per cent. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Scott Simpson. To the Minister, what recent reports has he seen updating the global economic outlook? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, the International Monetary Fund has recently released its World Economic Outlook. In this report, it has downgraded its forecast for the global economy to 3.2% in 2016 and 3.5% in 2017, which are reductions of 0.2% and 0.1% respectively. These downgrades in the global outlook reflect a softening in the outlook for advanced economies, which are, as a group, expected to grow 1.9 per cent this year, and some weaknesses in emerging economies, particularly Russia and Brazil. Notwithstanding this, the IMF expects the New Zealand economy to grow 2 to 2.5 2 per cent over the next two years, compared to average growth of less than 2 per cent across the other advanced economies. Order, order. Supplementary. The member's not helping. I mean, the minister's not helping the order of the house. Supplementary question, Scott Simpson. Mr. Speaker, given this outlook for the global economy, what are the expected consequences for New Zealand? The honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, New Zealand's major trading partners are concentrated in some of the emerging Asian economies these days, particularly China as well as uh, newly industrialised economies and also Australia. These account for more than half of New Zealand's goods exports. They continue to perform relatively well with growth rates that are above the world average. But that will, of course, not always be the case, which is why the government believes opening up new markets through the Trans-Pacific Partnership is important. New Zealand is expected to be relatively well placed to benefit from China's rebalancing from investment to consumption because it will raise demand for the sort of goods that New Zealanders are more specialised in. This rebalancing will be of benefit to exporters around the country, including in the Coromandel electorate. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question. Scott How Simpson. will Budget 2016 deliver on the government's commitment to support the growing economy despite global economic uncertainty? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, the Budget will deliver on the government's four priorities, which are responsibly managing the government's finances, delivering better public services, rebuilding Christchurch and building a productive and competitive economy. Budget 2016 will lift the government's commitment to business, employment, businesses, employment and growth, alongside further support for core public services, in particular health and education, where funding for both is already at record levels. Government spending is around one third of the economy, and so public sector productivity matters to overall growth. The government is investing in understanding the different services and how they work, part of its increasing commitment to social investment in this coming budget. Question number four.